Good morning and welcome to our worship from Morningside United Church here in Edinburgh. Today we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, the feast when the world is given the Holy Spirit, the gift of the third person of the Trinity to nudge us, to inspire us, to comfort us and to console us. It's strange, we celebrate the birth of Jesus and the world pauses to look at Christmas. We celebrate his resurrection and the world recognises Easter as a very special day in the calendar of life. But Pentecost, it's something which doesn't appear to touch us in any way at all. But it's important. It's important because it's the birthday of the church. And we read that in the book of Acts this morning. But it tells us something else, that though Jesus leaves us, he offers us a comforter, a consolation, and a transformation. Today we excitedly expect Christ to come, to speak to our hearts and our minds, and to revive us, recognising that his spirit is with us, the gift of God for all his people, for you and for me. Loving God, on this Feast of Pentecost, we thank you for the gift of your Spirit poured out upon the first disciples and which follows us still today. This morning, Holy Spirit of God, we praise you for gracing our worship and our prayers. We praise you for touching those who are connected with the church and those who are beyond. We praise you that with grateful hearts, you embrace us with love and that you continue to touch us the same today, yesterday, and forever. For this morning, we simply ask that in our quiet time of reflection, your gift of the Holy Spirit might help us pray as we ought. We pray too that you might give us the energy and vision of your Spirit so that those of us who are exhausted by the struggle of life might find hope and comfort those whose lives are overshadowed by darkness might find a friend, those whose life is touched with trouble might find peace and joy, those who are in the shadows of war and violence, who are affected by guilt and anxiety, who found their Christian life hard might discover courage and resilience. We pray that your spirit comes to us to help us, to be with us in our times of joy and of pain. Holy Spirit of God, 
help us. Strengthen us, we pray, especially that we might be rid of every prejudice so that we can love the rich as well as the poor, the simple as well as the clever, those who are like us and those who are different from us, those who are kind and easy to love and those whom we find dull and disagreeable. Might your spirit this morning soften our hearts so that if we carry grudges, you might take them away, that your loving presence might surround us and cause us to sense our commitment to you. And as we sometimes doubt your existence, we pray that you might forgive us for our faithlessness, pardon our faults, all our failings, excuse our complaints about life, forgive us for our lack of trust in your mercy, and inspire us to make amends for the hurts we cause those whom we love, forgiving us the hurt we do others. By your gentle spirit, remind us that our sins are forgiven. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The readings are taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 13, and then Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 19. The day of Pentecost had come, and they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came from the sky what sounded like a strong driving wind, a noise which filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them flames like tongues of fire distributed among them and coming to rest on each one. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other tongues as the Spirit gave them power of utterance. Now there were staying in Jerusalem devout Jews drawn from every nation under heaven. At this sound a crowd of them gathered and were bewildered because each one heard his own language spoken. They were amazed and in astonishment exclaimed, Surely these people who are speaking are all Galileans. How is it that each of us can hear them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, of Judea and Cappadocia, of Pontus and Asia, of Phrygia and Pamphylia, of Egypt and the districts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, all of us hear them telling in our own tongues the great things God has done. They were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What can this mean? Others said contemptuously, They have been drinking. Then Jesus, armed with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and reports about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone sang his praises. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he regularly did. He stood up to read the lesson, and was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He opened the scroll, and found the passage which says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me. He has sent me to announce good news to the poor, to proclaim release for prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind to let the broken victims go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Here end the readings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Pentecost is a confusing feast for some. We've already acknowledged that people don't want to recognise it, that it comes upon us many days after Easter. And this story here of the Apostles gathering in the book of Acts reminds us of something. They're given a gift from on high. Jesus has ascended and then an extraordinary transformation takes place. There comes a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filling the house where they were sitting. And the change was remarkable. So much so that some of the people who were with them reached the conclusion that they were just drunk. This tells us something about the excitement and joy that prevailed on that day. You see, it reminds us that the church was born in a storm and all the modern commentators of this verse are agreed on one thing. The wind that accompanied them was no gentle breeze. It was a tornado. Some translators described it as a blast. Dr Moffat, a violent blast, and Raymond Brown, the Catholic biblical scholar, a mighty storm. And when we contrast that with the gentle hymns of Pentecost, we need to think of God's Spirit coming to the church and to the world. A revolution, changing the way we think. And as we face the General Assembly this week, many of us are wondering what kind of future the church will have. There's talk of radical action plans. There's the idea that some churches and buildings have to close. People speak in reports of demography changing. Younger people switching on to the message of love and care. This is a challenge. Is the Spirit still speaking in this age? As someone said to me this week, why do you still believe? But I'm wondering if we can discover something both in the message to the apostles after Jesus ascends to heaven and also in our short reading from the Gospel account in Luke's. How do we begin to understand this thing? We understand that the disciples had a sense of wonder. And notice this, in their wonderment, something radical was happening. Just like the church emerging from this post-COVID period, even in the face of the anxieties and concerns of COVID, much hadn't changed, and much hadn't changed for the apostles. For them, Caesar still ruled. For ordinary people, life was a grind, the usual ups and downs that we all feel. But something was different. Those who had encountered Jesus had their lives touched. It was all changed. They'd never seen anything like this before, and it gave them extraordinary hope. So what are we to learn about God's Spirit? Well, can I suggest the first thing that we notice in the Acts of the Apostles and in our Gospel story when Jesus preaches with the Spirit is that people see the world differently. You see, people had been struggling to make sense of lives, but Jesus showed them it was possible to look upon the world and feel different about it. His presence, the gentle nudging of the Spirit they discovered, allowed them to see beyond the stubborn and tragic stuff of light, to see beyond darkness and sorrow, so they might find a different perspective. And it seems to me this is something which is important for us that can grant us hope. In these difficult times, as we do emerge from circumstances which seem overwhelming and beyond our control, we can change how we see the world. In these moments, we can begin to understand that we still have a role and a function and an opportunity. What is it to be blind to this world, to see ourselves as being incapable of being part of the process of change? But the spirit that we're given by God means that we have nothing to fear and we can step out to do good. Never doubt, it seems to me, that there is goodness around you. You just need to look for it and ask. 
Every day I am humbled as I watch the kindness of people finding light in dark places. We have to trust that with the gift of the Spirit we can find a perspective for our own lives and our own problems. When I think about the week that I've just had, I've spoken to mothers of children with disabilities. I've celebrated funerals of people who've lost someone who was a compass in their life. I've seen the effect of depression and mental health on people. But I've discovered too the stories of good neighbours, the faithfulness of families, of friends who've been loyal and gone way beyond the call of duty. I've discovered courage in caring, and I've seen a perspective that's allowed people to carry on, a nudge up the ladder of life. This is the perspective of the Spirit that nudges consciences and nudges us towards hope, even when we feel despair. But the second thing the Holy Spirit allows us to see is to see ourselves differently. For we need to learn this, that the Holy Spirit opens our eyes so we can see our true identity as people who are children of God. There's a huge problem in society. There are people who do not recognize their own worth. How many times do I meet people who say things like, I'm just a mother or a housewife? or they demean themselves in the description of their job. They don't feel that they're doing anything important. They're apologetic in telling me what they do. They don't feel good enough. Or I think of many of the kids I meet who tell me that they're not good enough. Their ambition and sense of self-esteem affected by the crisis of education caused by the pandemic. But the Bible points to the imperfection of people like you and me who struggle in life. Mary Magdalene, a stormy neurotic. Zacchaeus, a lonely rich man with few relationships of worth. Peter, a man who promises everything but never delivers. In other words, the encounters that Christ has in the scriptures are with people who do not see their value. But one person sees their value. It's Jesus himself. The Holy Spirit gently works to reveal the truth of all that they are, to reveal the truth of what you and I are as people. When we lose our confidence, when we feel overwhelmed, we can discover that God has seen our worth and that each of us deserves love and forgiveness and second chances. Pope Francis when being challenged about the great ethical issues of life, offers a word of constructive consolation. He simply says, who am I to judge? And he points to this truth. Every man, woman and child is a gift of God. The Holy Spirit allows us to see that value. And this is important because the final promise of the Holy Spirit is that he allows us to see our families and our neighbours, our friends and strangers differently. Surely it's true that the hardest job given to all of us, whatever our age in life, is just to get on with other people. We all know that it's in human relationships that we succeed or fail, whether it's friendships at school, colleagues at work, in our intimate and private relationships with partners, or in the dynamics with our family. We find our greatest joys and our deepest heartaches there because most of our relationships, well, they produce the troubles that affect our lives. Private worlds clash and collide at home and work and in what we do. But the Spirit of God allows us to see things differently, particularly families and neighbors. In each encounter with one another, we see something of Jesus. We can understand in our common humanity that we have to share much more than what we have that separates us. We can understand that everyone meet has something to say and every story is a story that can instruct us. We can see that we all struggle and that we don't have to burden each other. This becomes clear in how we live. 
A friend of mine who used to work in a call centre for a bank told me that too many people just called and shouted and were rude. And she wanted me to know that people ought to understand even the faceless and nameless who come to work with baggages and problems from home are human beings who deserve respect. She cares for her own mother, who's ill just now, and sometimes she feels burdened with this struggle, and yet people would abuse her at work because they can hardly see her. Mother Teresa was once asked why she helped those who were dying on the street. And she gently reminded that every person simply possessed the face of Christ. There was no beggar. There was God himself. You see, the Spirit nudges us to see in our families and neighbours that all have a sense of worth. It asks us to feel that by the grace of God, there we go. And we're called to bear by the gift of the Spirit its fruits, kindness, gentleness, understanding, compassion and mercy. So today, as we celebrate the fiery feast of Pentecost, we're called to consider the invisible spirit that gives sight to the blind, for surely that's what we are, by our prejudice and by our bigotry, by our judgmentalism and by our condemnation of others. For at the heart of the Christian life, there is a mysterious, miraculous inner experience of power that transforms the moment and gives us the light and the ability to see differently. For our faith teaches us that the gift of the Spirit moves through every generation, nudging us to action, stirring our imaginations, so that we don't have to accept the unacceptable, so that we can speak of a different way where the least will be cherished, where the poor will find favour, and where the lonely will know friendship that will never fail and where the bereaved shall see the promises of the cross come true, where you and I can know that we are loved by God. The gift of the Spirit is the birthday of the Church. Pentecost allows us to see the work of God continuing now and forevermore. Amen. And we make our prayers now for the world and for other people. Loving God, you are full of mercy. So on this Pentecost morning, as we start to pray for others, might we have confidence in your love, certain that you hear our prayers and that you seek to help and heal and save. Holy God, we pray for peace in this world, particularly where there's strife and violence. And we remember those who are victims of our inhumanity, particularly the suffering innocents in Palestine, Israel. Hear our cries for peace. And we pray for those who are poor and hungry. Hear us as we pray for justice for those who are in need, for those who are homeless, for those who are unemployed. Sustain them, Lord, when the world seems to reject them and devalue them. And loving God, in these difficult times, when churches are restricted in their work and numbers who can worship, we pray for the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland as it meets. We remember this congregation and our sister congregations in Morningside and Brunsfield. We ask that you fill our hearts with your spirit so that we can begin to look forward and outwards, that as lockdown eases, we might seek to serve our community and neighbourhoods wherever there is a need, giving us the grace to be true to our faith and loving in all our relationships. And we pray today for those who suffer, particularly those who are sick, broken in mind and body, those who are lonely and friendless, those who feel weak and discouraged, those who sorrow. Cause your spirit to remind us of their needs and the needs of those who care for them. Be with those who are suffering at home or hospital or work. Give strength to those who feel in their weakness a sense of despair and bring hope and friendship and peace to those who call upon your name. And Holy Spirit, 
We pray for our families, for those we love. We name them and hold them before you in a moment's silence. Hear us as we remember children and grandchildren, parents and cousins, nephews and nieces, those who are happy and successful, those who are with worries and who live with anxieties, those who are old and feeling the effects of aging, those who remain young in spirit, those who are weighed down by the responsibilities of parenting. Bless the homes of those we love. Grant them happiness, the company of your spirit, that their lives might be shaped in peace and love, that you might bless them today and forevermore. And loving God, gently touch the lives of those who are bereaved, and those who face the loss of those whom they've loved. We pray for the recently bereaved, for parents who've lost a child, children who've lost parents, Husbands and wives separated by death. By your spirit, bring them comfort in their sorrow. Wipe away every tear with your unending love and grant them hope to face the future with the certainty that those they've loved are precious to God in heaven. Help us to follow their example and bring us with them to the fullness of your kingdom of love when we shall see them again counted with the saints. Almighty God, hear these prayers and kindle within us the fire of your love so that in the days ahead we might serve those whom we encounter with good words and good days, certain that we journey not alone, that you carry us in our faltering steps and that you refresh us with the gift of heaven, with love that completes us and gives us hope. Amen. of God be above you to overshadow you, beneath you to uphold you, before you to guide you, behind you to protect you, close beside you and within you to make you able for all things, 
and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you and all whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.